The Dogens are practically riding themselves at this point, and oh, I will tell you, there is some pretty good Dogens out there after this came out in the manga. Not going to give a link, though. I want to keep that to myself. But all jokes aside, though, this episode really goes far to show how amazing Erwin is as a character. How he can literally orchestrate an entire coup just to rebel against the people in power to create a whole new world. It's just honestly impressive. And this moment that happened in this episode is honestly what made me truly love this arc in the manga. And I was like, why are people hating on this arc? It's so good. I mean, this character development that we have going on with a bunch of our characters. Erwin is a big example of just character development, finding out why he drives himself to try to, you know, attack Titans, you know, risk his life, risk everybody else's life and all that. You know, we, we get a little bit, you know, background information that and also how he kind of you know, looks at what he wants. He wants to discover and accomplish his dream and what he discovered when he was a little boy before his father died. There's just so many things that happened throughout this episode, but just this arc, that made me love it. And I was just like, whoa, why, why doesn't people really like this? And I think now that this has been animated, I think majority of people's opinions are probably going to be relatively positive to this arc because honestly, the anime adaptation to this arc has just blown my mind. It's the very reason to why I want to be an anime only. Why I no longer read the manga of Attack on Titan is because I want to experience everything as an anime only. The only thing I know I'm going to be probably a little bit upset with is probably the censorship because there is always going to be censorship in Attack on Titan. And I don't blame Witch Studios for that. That's not their fault. I've said this in other series throughout the years that censorship is not actually the studio's fault. I mean, I guess the form of censorship they use is their job or how it is. But I mean, overall, censorship, it has to happen. They can't just air everything on TV in Japan. Manga is a completely different ball game. So I don't blame Witch Studios for censoring things like, you know, the whole stuff with Han and how she was, you know, torturing the dude. You know, I'm not, you know, blaming for taking some scenes out. However, I will miss the fact that I won't get to see all of the dark, nitty-gritty details that were actually in the manga, and I'm willing to bet this upcoming episode, the next episode that's going to come out, is probably going to have a certain scene that many of you might know. You know what I'm talking about. It's a very, like, messed up scene that made all of us go like, what? Like, when, when we first saw that in the manga, I'm willing to bet that's probably going to be cut out. I, I really, really believe that's going to get cut out and it's not going to be added back in. If it is, don't worry, anime onlys. I will discuss it. I will talk about it. Do not worry. I probably won't be able to show the picture on screen because of how messed up it is, but I will talk about it, so do not worry. But okay, to get into what this episode was about and what makes this episode so amazing is how throughout the episode there was a lot of tension building up to Erwin and his situation. We didn't know if he was going to even make it out alive in this episode, if he was going to survive and win the gamble or if he was going to die. We had no idea what the outcome would be and that was probably the scariest part about this episode because Erwin is a character we have seen pretty much since the beginning of Attack on Titan. We've got to experience how his character is his passion for wanting to save humanity and you know progress humanity, you know what he did in season two and all that losing his arm i mean he's done some insane things that makes many respect him as a character he's honestly up there with iconic characters like levi and how many people love him he, levi's one of my favorite characters but so is erwin and how he just demonstrates how great of a leader he can be and so in this episode when you see him just standing before the you know the royal family standing before the government officials and all that you're just you're in your seat rocking back and forth wondering What's going to happen? Is everything going to go wrong? Is he going to be by himself? Is he going to die by himself? What is going to happen? And I just love that build up to that very moment to when all of a sudden there's like an information coming in saying that the Colossal Titan and the Armor Titan has started to attack again. And you see the government officials starting to panic and they're like, yo, whoa, 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 like, you know, close the gates and all that. You know, we don't want a civil war. And just the way that was done, it was just, it felt very real. Honestly, if you're an anime only, you were like the government officials. You, you were in their shoes not really knowing what to, you know to expect you were left out of the loop 
well, very much like they were. And so when you saw the truth get revealed and that it was just all, you know, a setup and it was just literally just saying a fake story just to see the reaction of the people in charge, that's when you're like, whoa, the, the amount of thinking to be able to accomplish something like this is pretty freaking impressive, but also the balls to go through with it. Because, I mean, honestly, if the government officials actually would have been, you know, nice people and they would have chose the right option then all of the individuals that were trying to do this coup would have been fine with just offering their heads because they knew that they started something and obviously the government officials were doing something right and they were good people but obviously they found out the truth and they weren't so just great overall i love how this episode built up to that very moment for when that reveal just kicks and you're like holy crap I especially love the fake king that was sitting in the throne. This is honestly one of my favorite moments in the manga. I don't know how many people really care about it, honestly, and I don't know how many anime onlys are going to care about the scene, but I remember when I was reading the manga, and, you know, we had the fake king just sitting in the throne like this. You know, he's looking all serious, and, I mean, throughout this episode, he's looking very menacing, and you're just like, whoa, is this man, like, a secret mastermind? Is he, you know, a titan? Who is this man? Like, what's he going to do? And he just looks very... Very creepy. Like, he looks like a character you would see that would be like Aizen. Aizen from Bleach. And you're like, what's he gonna do? What's part of his plan? Is everything going according to plan? But then all of a sudden they tell him to wake up and he's like, huh? And he acts all weird and all that. And you're like, are you serious? This character that was giving off this menacing vibe like from JoJo straight up is like this joke character. I'm like only Attack on Titan. I love how they kind of go around that cliche of like the fake king or fake royalty being smart in turn it was actually just really dumb and just a puppet all along so let's talk about going for what is on the table what is needing to happen now so obviously with the coup taking place the world is now going to change the people in power are no longer in power that means the people keeping the secrets to the people hushing people all of that they are no longer in power unless there's another secret organization that we don't know about that still holds power deep underground amongst the, you know, the officials. But we don't really know about that. But the big point is, is that, at the very least, the, the power, the people in power in public eye is now gone. They no longer have to worry about that. That means that a lot of changes can start to take place. Technological advances to just trying to fund, you know, the scouts to be able to go out there and, you know, you know get back the wall that they already lost before. You know, there, there's a lot of things that can, you know, be done now because of the government now being changed up. And that right there is just a solid sign that we're finally going to start progressing with the main story and getting the answers that we actually want. But here's another thing, too, we also have to look at. We also know that these government officials, even though they're scummy and they were willing to sacrifice half of humanity like that, there's still a thing we got to consider here. They have kept humanity alive for decades, okay? A long time. And you don't just do that. You don't just keep humanity alive that long without being good at it. So, whatever may be going on, what Erwin and everybody else just did could have opened up Pandora's box, and now there's no going back, and all of them could literally face extinction now because of what they just did. We don't know, but like I said, it's a whole new world, a whole new future. Nobody knows what to expect, and that's what makes this so fascinating, what is going to happen? Now, let's talk about the situation with Aaron. Now, Aaron, he really hasn't had much of the spotlight these past few episodes, which is, you know, pretty interesting when you think about it, because he's our MC. He is someone that is technically supposed to get a lot of spotlight, according to, you know, the standards of, you know, any type of series, not just manga and anime, but literature, the MC should get a lot of focus, but he really hasn't, which is not a bad thing. We do need a lot of character development, character progression for our other cast of characters like Hanji, what she's gotten, what Levi's gotten, what Armin's gotten, you know, what our man Horseface has gotten. You know, we, we've seen a lot of characters get development. So, you know, if we have to sacrifice Eren's screen time to get character development for everybody else, I think everybody can't really disagree with that. But Eren, though, there's a question that pops up at the end, is that... Who did he eat to become a Titan? See, that's the ongoing theory right now. To be able to become a Titan shifter, to be able to shift into a Titan like what Eren does, or, you know, what the Colossal Titan does, or the Armor Titan, or Annie did in the past, you know, who did they eat to get that power, if that theory is actually true? That means, who did Eren eat? Because if he had to eat someone to become a Titan shifter, then how, how did that happen? Who was it? 
And it makes you start to wonder, think, like, what, what's going on here with the story? What, what's trying to build up? What's the offer trying to tell us? But there is something I do want to point out. Amongst, you know, this question, you do get to see this woman that pops up in Aaron's mind. Like, you know, you see this woman that looks very similar to him, but then all of a sudden he opens his eyes and he's awake and he sees his story down below, which that right there makes you wonder, what was that? What was happening there? What was Aaron seeing? And, you know, who is that person? But yeah. Now, speaking of Historia, Historia is also a big wild card right now as well, because you don't know if, you know, Historia is going along with whatever her father is doing. You don't really have any clue whatsoever, and it's just left you up in just, you know, wondering, okay, so is she working with him? Is she trying to save Aaron? What's happening here? Because Aaron, he's legit tied up, can't do anything, and you would think someone like Historia wouldn't allow that, especially after everything that's happened between these two individuals, so... What's also happened there? So a lot of questions have built up with this episode, and I think many can agree that this is definitely one of the best episodes of Attack on Titan Season 3 to date that has come out. It may not have had as lot of action scenes like the first two episodes, but you have to admit, at the very least, this episode was very impressive from the standpoint of story progression, character development, but also getting things done for we can get into the end game of the story. And so with that, I want to end this video here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, you know, please please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like, and if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below, because for some reason, even if you click the subscribe button, you don't always get notified whenever a video is uploaded, not just from me, but from any YouTuber, so if you want to get notified, please click that bell icon down below, and don't do it just for me, do it for all the other YouTubers you like out there, because it will help us all out a lot, and with that, I love you guys, please be safe, Chibi out.